I want to share this morning about faith for your purpose, faith for your vision, or faith for your dream. Whatever it is that's uh, going on in your world today, whatever's going on in your life today. And I, and I believe that we need to understand some things. Uh, you know, a lack of understanding sometimes... Uh, we, we don't realize what God's doing or what God's got for us or what's really happening. And if you don't understand that, well, things can pass you by or, or an experience can happen in your life and, and just think, oh, that was nice. Instead of grabbing hold of it and, and understanding that this is God getting hold of your life, this is God wanting to do something dynamic and powerful in your life, maybe wanting to change direction, might be wanting to, to take you into a higher place or a better place or whatever it might be. So just understanding this, dwelling inside of you right now. I want you to say to somebody right now, not up the road, not in, you know, after I've been through the three-month Bible school or not after I've been ordained or not after this or not after that, but dwelling inside of you right now is a built-in, God-created substance for your purpose, for your vision, for your dream. It's already in you right now. It's already there and it's God created. It's something that God put in you. It is a powerful substance that is designed to be stimulated. You've got to understand this, that every one of us have got something dynamic on the inside of us, but we sometimes get stimulated and then we walk away from it. But it's designed, this substance that God's put inside you is designed to be stimulated when it comes in contact with the Word of God or what God says uh, to you through the prophetic about what you can have or what you can do. You see, I believe it's the anointing that stimulates this God-given purpose or this God-given dream or this God-given vision that is inside of you today. What an amazing substance this is. It, it is an amazing thing. The Bible calls it faith. Simple word, but it's got a lot more than just that little word. It's, it isn't floating around in the atmosphere out there somewhere, out of your reach. See, a lot of people, I believe, want to be used by God. How many people really want God to do something through you and that you can be a part of this end, of the end time church that God's building. And you see, I believe more than you but want that, God wants it. If I can get that into my head, God wants to do, and it's not that I just want to do something for God, but God wants me to find my purpose, my potential, or the dream that God's put inside of my life. He wants to, that to be made manifest on the inside of us. And it's the anointing that stimulates that. It's not something that's floating around out there somewhere out of your reach, but it's in you right now. It's in you right now. And that's what I really want to get across to us this morning, that right now there's the answer, there's something on the inside of you that God's wanting to touch. God wants to touch it. What we've got to realize is that when we start talking like this, that God is not spooky. One of the things that turns a lot of people off is they get these the spooky Christians. Who knows what I'm talking about? God's always talking to them. God, yeah, always, always. And, and, and that could be possible. It could be possible. It could be happening. But, but there's a thing there, and, a, and it's like a spooky thing that, that sort of turns people away. You might say, I don't have faith. You might say, but, you know, who am I? I'm a nobody. I don't have faith. Romans 12, 1 through 3 says that God has dealt or given to each one a measure of faith. You have a measure of faith. You see, every one of us have got a measure. We all have a measure. It's what you do with the measure. If you give it to God, He will increase it. it otherwise, it will just lay dormant. It is God's given us this measure. What is faith? The Bible, Bible calls faith a substance, a substance of what you hope for. Anybody here got any hopes, any desires? Amazing. The Bible has got an answer for everything. It says whatsoever you desire when you pray, if you believe, you can have it. Amazing things. But you see, this substance is what you hope for. 
The Bible also calls faith the evidence of things that you can't see. So faith is an amazing thing. I want to read uh, Hebrews uh, to you right now. And uh, if you just open up your Bibles with me. Hebrews chapter 11, we all know it where it is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. That, that is an amazing statement. If we can somehow or other comprehend what this verse really means, we can, we can catch something of the supernatural presence of God and how God works. I, I, want to, I don't want to work in the natural. I want to work in the realm of the Spirit. I don't, I don't want to work in the, in the area of my understanding. I want to go beyond that. Amen. Faith is, is a substance. It's something there that's so important. In other words, uh, I believe what God is saying, and another way of saying Jesus, it's like you and I are saying, Jesus, I believe you can and you will do what you say. I believe that you can and you will do what you say. In reality, it's already done. <laughs> it's already done, amen. As far as God's concerned, he, He's going to have a church without spot or wrinkle. It's already done, amen. He's going to have a move of the Spirit. It's already done as far as He's concerned. He is, the, the sick are healed. It's already done as far as He's concerned. All we've got to do is line ourselves up so that we can receive it. We hear of people there that, that got a miraculous healing. How did it happen? They just connected with God. Somehow or other, they got connected. God created the universe with His words out of nothing, it says there. In Genesis 1.1, God used faith to create His vision, to create His worlds. He used the same faith that he asked us to do. He just spoke. There was nothing. And he spoke the word and he created the worlds out of nothing. God calls those things that be not as though they were. He used the same substance, the same faith to create you. Genesis 1, 26, it says, that, and God says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So we, we look at the universe and we look right now and there's the greatest scientists, scientific minds in the world cannot fathom it, cannot understand it, cannot work it out. They've got all their theories, they've got all their understanding. So we look at that too and we look at, the, at, at everything that's out there. But then I can now look back at myself and say the same power, the same anointing, the same creative ability that created that created me. Amen. That's why I say to people when they ask me, how do you feel? Who are, how are you? I say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You should say that to some unsaved people. <laughs> you know how most people say, how are you? And they don't care. It's just a phrase we use. Well, why don't you just reverse a little bit and say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you. <laughs> That'll get them thinking. <laughs> well, I might get them running. So in Genesis there, 126, it says there that we're created by that same creator. Use the same su substance to create you. Faith is what makes the worlds go round, literally. <laughs> Amen? A lot of people say that, but faith is what makes the worlds go round. It's going up there today because of faith, because God created it through faith. Faith simply is trusting God. Us down here now is trusting God. The Bible also says, says to you, add to your faith. In 2 Peter 1 uh, verse 5, it says, add to your faith, love and things like that. There's many things. Add to your love something else and something else. It's just so that we don't go off on a, on a power kick or, or some power ta tangent. In Galatians 5, 6, it says, faith, without, uh, faith works through love, rather. Faith works through love. But faith works. Everybody say, faith works. Let's, and, and again, let's just have a quick look again at Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
This is quite contrary to the way you and I want it. I want to be able to see it, then I'll believe it. That was Thomas' kind of faith. But Jesus talked about a bunch of people that wouldn't see, but they would believe. And so here, you know, the evidence of things not seen. I may not be seeing a revival yet. I may not be seeing what I believe is going to happen, but I believe anyhow. I put my trust in what God says he's going to do. I have to put my trust in that, not by what I see. If I put myself by, in what I see, I'm in trouble. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And then we find the, the list of different people that went through different things. If we could only comprehend this passage of Scripture and bring it into our now, into our world. And again, I want to say it's the now that I really want to speak about today. Now is, now is that there's something happening right now. You, you're sitting in this meeting today and you could, you could get a touch from God. You could get a, you could get a doodad or whatever it might be. You could get a prophetic utterance. You could get something somewhere along the line out of the song or whatever. And you could just you know, you'd get so excited. But then if you don't understand that God wants to do something in me, it's just another experience. It's just another little testimony. And we walk away from it instead of harnessing yourself to it, embracing it and bringing it around your life and not letting it go and say, God, you started something in here and now I want you to finish it. I want you to continue to, to build on that now. Sometimes God touches us and then we walk away from it. We walk away from what God's doing. We only comprehend this passage of Scripture and bring it into our now, into our world, and not out there somewhere in the supernatural world that's only accessible or reserved for some special elite ministries. That's where we get it wrong because we, we, we honor and re revere and, and re you know, great men and women of God that have done great things. And you know, we look at that and we, we think, oh my God, they're, they're just so special to you or something like that. Friend, I want to tell you, they were given the same measure of faith that you have. They were given the same measure of faith that you have. But they allowed what God was doing in the now to get inside them and to build and to build and to build and to build. Amazing things that God can do. Whatever God can do is amazing. Supernatural world. Some specially elite uh, people. You see, it's not so. Wigglesworth was an uneducated plumber. But I want you to catch something here as a, with this next phrase that I'm going to say. When God, here's an uneducated plumber. How many people know when God gets on the scene, he changes things? Amen? An uneducated plumber that had, his wife had an amazing ministry. I would imagine he would have sat there and listened to her and watched her move in the spirit and all those sort of things. And there would have been something on the inside of him that would have said, oh my, if only I hadn't. If only I had been better educated. If only I had a, had a different situation in my life. You know, if only, if only, if only. Friend, the if onlys will kill what God wants to do in your life. It will hold you back. It will stop you from becoming what God wants you to become. This uneducated plumber was sitting in perhaps a meeting like this, sitting somewhere listening perhaps to a preacher, listening to, 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 to a song, I don't know what it was, what, whatever happened. But when God ignited something on the inside of him, let me say, God can ignite something on the inside of you. I pray for Steele and his wife that God would ignite something on the inside of him this morning as a result of having that, uh, 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 that prayer. I pray today that for Cyril, that God will ignite something on the inside of him that will take him beyond the natural into the supernatural. 
I pray for every person in this building today that God will touch something on the inside of us that will cause us to go further and deeper than we've ever been before in our lives. He might have been reading his Bible or listening to a preacher, but something on the inside of him burst into flame. Rashakabundi, <laughs> amen. And his purpose and his God given dream became a re- re- reality or a substance. Let me explain. Dwelling inside you right now is a built in God created substance. We've got to get that past our brain, better known as your purpose, the vision, the dream. It may start as a hope. It's just waiting to be ignited. There is a, there is a connection that takes place when the Word of God stimulated stimulates you. There is a connection that takes place when the Word of God stimulates the message of faith inside of you. The Word of God is alive. It's living. It's active. Do you believe that today? Colossians uh, 1.29 says, God is working mightily in me. God wants to work mightily in us. He is not asleep. We said in the prayer meeting out there, just at the end of the prayer meeting, the church is trying to wake God up. And God is trying to wake the church up. We pray like as if God's asleep. God's not asleep, amen. He's very much alive. The faith you have inside of you was given to you by God himself. I don't know about you, but this encourages me. I, I'm not just kneel up here, but I'm kneel up here with something that God has put on the inside of me. A vision, a desire, a, a purpose, a plan. Inside of you, was, it was given to you by God himself, by a living God who inspired the scriptures we have today. God wrote this book to us to encourage us The book of Ephesians and different books there that that you read them. And and, and I want to tell you as you read those books that the fire of God would jump out of those pages and jump on the inside of your purpose and touch it in Jesus' name that it would burst into flame. (laughs) When your measure of faith is connected with God's word, something extraordinary happens. Faith and the word collide and wham. Everybody say wham. There was a cartoon, it was Captain Marvel. I think he used to say Shazam. But when, when the word and, and that inside of you connects, there's a, there's a wham, there's a life. All things are possible. Something is birthed in the realm of the spirit. Satan wants to abort this which God has birthed in you. Today, tragedy is that there are so many, so many hundreds of people today that where the dream, the purpose, the plan has been aborted. Satan gets you thinking wrong thoughts about yourself. That might work work for you, Neil, but not for me. Well, I was an uneducated carpenter. (laughs) But I remember when something ignited on the inside of me. Can you remember when something ignited on the inside of you? As a matter of fact, it's happening right now. (laughs) Though the enemy has tried to abort God's plan for me, it's still living inside of me. I feel more energized today as I ever had. Somebody asked me the other day, When are you going to retire? When God says. He hasn't mentioned a retirement plan to me yet. But I tell you what, he just said, go back to the Sunshine Coast. 
And that's what I'm living on. Amen? The enemy might have said different things. He might have said lots of things. Disappointment, brokenness comes upon you many, many times. But I want to tell you, I'm reminded of one thing, one phrase, go back and plant a church and the Sunshine Coast and hell will have to freeze over before God changes his mind and I change my mind. Amen. If you're looking for a retirement plan from me, it's not coming. The key to keeping the vision alive in you. Don't talk yourself out of entering into what God wants to do through you. Children of Israel, God wanted to take them into the promised land. In Numbers, they talk themselves out of it. Don't talk yourselves out of what God wants to do to you, for you. Speak good things over your life. Psalm 139, 14 says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's my, that's my word. Amen. Don't speak sickness over yourself. Speak healing. Don't speak failure. Speak victory. Speak victory over your life. Don't speak poverty. Speak prosperity. Speak good things over your life. Matthew 5.13 says if the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing, but, be, but to be trampled under feet. I believe if the church or Christians lose the Holy Spirit, the church and the Christians get trampled under Satan's feet. But I believe that God wants to bring restoration. Do you believe that? I believe that he said he's going to restore all things. Moses was a murderer, and his per he lost his purpose. God finds him on the backside of a desert. One of the things that really encouraged me, I guess, is Moses, most surely in his own thinking, would have thought, I've missed it. It's all over. I had my chance, and it never happened. You may even think that way yourself. Because that's what the enemy wants to put into people's lives. Hopelessness, negativity, failure, defeat. He wants to take away the dream, the vision, the purpose, the plan. And I guess there's not one person here that hasn't had an opportunity to walk away from what God has for your life. And Moses would have been like that. But the thing that blessed me was that God never, ever, never, ever lost his purpose and his plan for Moses' life. And I have to believe today that God has not left or lost the purpose and the plan that he has for my life. And you've got to do the same for your life. I can't do that for you. You have to do that for yourself. But if I speak positively about myself, if I speak life to myself, if I speak victory to myself, if I speak like that to myself, there's a good chance I'll make it. Because God is seeking those who look are, after, are going after Him. And here is Moses. And the thing that happened is this, that Moses is on the backside of a desert, and all of a sudden... God turns up. And it wasn't just like as if he sent him a telegram or an email or whatever it might have been, Facebook, I'm coming. No, he showed up in the form of a burning bush. And the interesting thing is this, and this is what can happen to a lot of us. We can have our burning bush. We can have our meeting place with God. We can meet with God in a particular way. And just keep on walking. Just keep on walking and say, wasn't that a great phenomena? Wasn't that an awesome feeling? I got goosebumps on me when that happened and all this. But just keep walking. Friend, can I say this? Don't keep walking. Stop and have a look. Stop and have a look. Stop and see what's going on. Stop and see what's happening here. Stop and see what is causing this to happen. And as he stopped, and as he started to inquire, and as he started to look at this burning bush, all of a sudden the fire jumped out of the bush and got into Moses. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, friends, if you stop 
from wandering around and you stop and have a look, the fire of God that's even in this place and in other churches that are on fire for God will jump out of the bush and jump into you and you'll find yourself on fire for God. Hallelujah. With new purpose, new dream, new passion, new desires, new love, new everything. Hallelujah. I had a thought this morning as I was driving to church. And as I was driving to church, I was, th- I was thinking this. Today, how many people are sitting back in their houses and they're contemplating suicide? How many husbands and wives are at each other's throats, are having an argument, even contemplating divorce? How many young girls and boys today are losing their virginity as we preach this morning? How many young kids today are shoving heroin into their veins and getting, some, getting messed up? How many young girls are going to, to the hospital on Monday to book in for an abortion? How many, how many are in the valley of decision? How many, how many? And the church, we come along and we sing a few lullabies. I want to tell you, friends, don't just sing lullabies. Get on fire for God. Get hold of that burning bush and let the fire jump out of the bush and get on the inside of you and stir you up again. Again, hallelujah, that you become a voice into this city, that you become a voice that will turn many back. That's what we're here for. I'm not here for any other reason. That's it. How many want a, a dose of the ghost? How many want a touch from the Lord? How many want to get ignited on the inside? How many want to go out of this place different than the way you came in? Come on. How many people? Let's stand to our feet. Let's get out the front. Hallelujah. Come on out here. We're going to pray with you. We're going to believe God with you. We're going to go. Come on. Just come on. Hurry up. We want the fire. We want the power. You're saying, I want the fire of God burning in my belly. Hallelujah. I want the power of God. I want the power, the power, the power, the power. I want the power, the power, the power. I want the power.